Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 31. The special dual purpose water tank for the steam plant is now complete. And here it is on screen. You can see the injector has been fitted. All I need to do now is make a cap for it. Once again there are plenty of top tips in this video and later on in the video I show how to make a steam turret. In this clip I'm holding the tank upside down and I'm drawing round it on a piece of brass because this piece of brass is going to be machined to make the top cap. The purpose of this top cap, apart from it's going to look good, is to keep the inside of the water tank clean when the boiler plant's not in use, because when the boiler plant's in use, generally speaking the top cap will not be in position, because I'll need to top up the tank very frequently. I roughly cut out the shape on the bandsaw, and now I'm finding the centre of this piece, because I need to drill a hole in the middle, which I'm going to thread 2BA, I'm going to fit a 2BA bolt, and this will be clamped in the chuck, so then I'll be able to turn this very rough brass blank into a very nice top cap for the water tank. Now I've found the centre, I'm using a centre punch to punch the hole. There it goes. Then I took it over to the drilling machine and drilled the hole in the centre, which is 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter, and in this clip I'm threading the hole using a 2BA tap. After which I screw in a 2BA bolt, followed by a 2BA nut, and as you can see the whole thing's quite off centre because it was only a rough cut to start with. But I did allow for this by cutting on the outside of the felt tip pen line, so by the time I've got it to the right size it will be a perfect fit on the top of the water tank. This clip on screen at the moment is running much faster than it should be, and that's why the brass blank looks more wobbly than it actually was. Either way though, it's not important, this is only a top cap for a water tank. I still need the part of the top cap that's going to fit in the top of the tank to be accurate, so I'm taking my time with this and getting it dead right. You may notice that I've changed the tool to a parting tool because this cuts a much squarer edge, but if you're doing a job like this, bear in mind this is only held by the nut of a 2BA bolt, so you can put a lot of pressure on it and be more gentle than it looks with this. Once I cleaned up the outer edges, I removed the nut and used some fine sandpaper followed by some scotch bright to get a finish like this. I need to make an ornamental knob to fit on the top of it. And this is a simple plain turning job, but I've really speeded this up because it takes a while to do really. The hole in the centre is 2BA, which will fit on a 2BA bolt that will go through the cap. Once I parted off the component, I refitted it to a 2BA bolt held in the chuck, and by applications of different grades of sandpaper followed by polishing it on the polishing spindle, the finished part looks exactly like this. And now to complete the job, I just need to verify that this is a stainless steel bolt. Well, it's not magnetic, so I guess it is. All that's left to do now is to fit the 2BA bolt to the threaded top cap from underneath, and then fit the small knob to the top of the 2BA bolt. And that's it. When I first started this very simple ornamental turning, I didn't really know what the knob was going to look like. If I was going to make more than one, I would use a form tool. But this is an absolute one-off, and there's only one like it in the world, and here it is. I'm quite pleased with the way this water tank's turned out. It looks exactly like I thought it would look when I started making it. This is the main steam tap on the boiler, but I need more steam outlets than just one. I need one for the injector, and I need a couple for maybe a couple of steam engines. So I need to make a steam manifold, which I'm going to make out of this square piece of brass, and the other piece of brass will form the column that it sits on. In this video, I'm only going to show the making of the manifold. I'm going to save the column until the next video. The job starts by marking out the part and cutting it to the right size. And for the physical size of this piece of brass, I think 3 inches is about right for the length. So I'm marking it out here at 3 inches, but in reality, when I cut it, I'm going to cut it slightly larger than that to allow for some machining. Here's my trusty old bandsaw making short work of this piece of brass. And you'll be pleased to know that this video is running at the actual speed. Normally I often speed up machining and cutting operations, but with this new blade it's cutting through the brass so fast I don't need to. Cutting like a knife through butter. The next thing to look at is a question of scale. How long should the column be? How high should the manifold be held above the baseboard? And I really don't know, this sort of looks okay. 
Obviously the column part will need turning down to be the same diameter as the thickness of the turret. I'm marking the top of the manifold with a felt tip pen, so that when I scribe the lines on it I'll be able to see the lines very clearly. To be perfectly honest I'm only doing this for the video because I can generally see the lines ok, but the camera sees them better against a black background. Over now to the larger of my two lathes, and this one's fitted with a four jaw self centering chuck, quite a large four jaw self centering chuck as well. That squeaking noise at the beginning is the belt, I need to change the drive belt from the motor to the lathe, and one day I'll find the time to pull the lathe out and do that. I've been stalling for quite a while, because this lathe weighs over half a ton, but currently it's working fine, it just makes a funny noise when I engage the clutch when it's cold. The first job when making the manifold is to turn the ends of it round. The fact that the manifold is square in the first place is not possibly the best scale type design, but it's a convenient way of making the manifold. But if all of it was square then it would look terrible. I'm going through the usual procedure of first of all using a centre drill, followed by a twist drill, to drill all the way down through this component. Now I can't do it in one go, nor do I want to. If I was using a twist drill like this one, and by the way, this one is only a 5.30 seconds of an inch twist drill. If I was using this to drill all the way through, at the other end it would probably have wandered a little bit. So it's a good idea to drill halfway in from one end, and then turn it round in the chuck and drill in from the other end. I then put the manifold in the drilling machine, drill three holes in it, tapping size for 5 sixteenths by 32, when I was three quarters of the way through the tapping operation, I realised that this manifold was hopelessly overscale. And this reminded me of the bird tables my father used to make. They were suitable for pterodactyls and elephants to land on, not just small garden birds. So, it's back to the drawing board. We all make mistakes, said the Dalek climbing off the dustbin. This time I'm going to get it right. I've selected a smaller piece of brass, and this one is half an inch square, and it's much more in keeping and definitely more in scale with the steam plant that I'm building. A Stuart 504 boiler only has a three and a half inch diameter barrel, and whichever other components I put on the plant, that's the size of the boiler. So the steam manifold needs to be this size, not like the previous one. This one's going to be much better, and when it's all finished, you will see what I mean. In this clip you will see that I'm using a paintbrush to remove the swarf. It's good to keep the work clean, particularly before you tap it, because if the hole is already full of swarf, you won't get to the bottom of it with the tap. And here comes the third hole, again removing the swarf. Now that's been threaded, using a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap. And now it's back over to the lathe to show you my felt tip pen. And you may be wondering, why is he showing us a felt tip pen? It's a very nice felt tip pen, but what's the point? Well, the point is, it's really useful for making a mark on a drill bit when you don't want it to go too far into the hole. It's far quicker than setting up a depth stop because all you have to do is feed the drill into the hole you want to drill just up to the line made by the felt tip pen, then it's done. And the reason for doing this? Well, at each end of the manifold, I need to fit a plug. The plug is going to be a quarter by 40 threads per inch, but the problem is that if I'd have used a tapping size drill all the way through, suitable for quarter by 40 threads per inch, the centre hole would have been too big, and the three holes that are threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch would have insufficient threads to support and seal the taps that are going to be fitted in the holes. The next job is to drill all the way through the centre hole with a tapping size drill for 5 sixteenths by 32, then bash the part on the bench to remove all the swarf followed by threading the part all the way through. Normally I would start off a threading operation where it's important that the thread is at right angles to the work in the drilling machine. I would drill the hole and feed in the tap manually in the drill chuck, but there's no need to do it this way because the thread is already there from the other side. All I have to do is use that as a guide and go all the way through. This last operation is a very important and very useful operation. I'm making a very shallow hole in the underneath part of the manifold, and for this I'm using an end mill. I'm not using a slot drill, they can be a little bit violent and dance about, particularly in this drilling machine, which is not the best drilling machine in the world. An alternative is to use one of these, this is called a D-bit, 
The reason I didn't use it immediately was I'm aware that not everyone has these. And these are really useful for drilling holes that need a flat bottom. It's fairly obvious why it's called a D bit. It looks like a letter D if you look at it end on. Here's the finished manifold. I'm just illustrating in this clip how important it is that the holes are in the correct position relative to each other. If they're too close, then you will not be able to screw the taps in position. The best thing to do before you start is to lay everything out on the bench and do what could be called a dry run. I can't really give dimensions on this one because it depends on which kind of steam taps you're going to be using. So that's the steam manifold made. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.